What is good internet? It's Spirit of Paradox here and welcome back to another video. And today we have finally got the new Ultimate. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm actually disappointed with this book. Because it's called the Ultimate. And it goes out of its way to pretty much not show anything anything that's related to the ultimate in fact it shows more stuff that's related to earth 616 than to earth 1610 and um, the reason i have a problem with that is because it's called the ultimate which is from earth 1610 yet you go out of your way to not show anything from the universe that this book is named after. So I guess this book is for everyone except Ultimates fans. And Ultimate Universe fans. So I guess I was right. This whole universe basically is just a cash grab. And the name Ultimate is really there just to bait. To nostalgia bait people into buying the books. But anyway... Let's get into this. If you guys are fans of the Ultimate Universe, both the old and the new, I cover both, even though I am not enjoying covering the new one. Make sure you drop a like and subscribe. Let's begin. The story begins with the aftermath of the blast where the satellite dish was fired. Dear Dad. Dear God. You sure made a mess of things, didn't you? What a mess. Six months, Dad. Six months you've been gone to the world. Six months trapped with that monster. We can fix it, says Tony. I was referring to us, Iron Lad. We are a mess. For you... It probably seems like a thousand years, but for us, it was yesterday. I know it doesn't look good. To review, we've escaped six months into the future. Thousands died in the attack on Stark Tower, meant for us. The perpetrators of that attack, a conspiracy of the worst and most powerful people imaginable have taken control both of the planet and of the narrative, and the world thinks we're violent terrorists. Also, our most powerful ally is gravely injured, and another trapped in ice, and in 18 months, the devil breaks out of hell. As I said, a mess. But we have a time machine. We can fix it. In an off-the-books, Stain and Stark corporate spy satellite, we worked it all out. Two years to fix the world. You mean 18 months. We've travelled six months into the future, Doom. It's June. Not that complicated. We have a time machine, you said. But did you understand it? With the Immortus engine... We can act simultaneously in the past, present, and future. You'll have to think in all four dimensions if you want to change the world, Iron Lad. Point taken. So why stop there? If we can go back six months, why not sixty years? Why not fix everything? The Maker's work is not so easily unmade. Events before disabled his temporal shields are out of reach, for now, so we to speak. There are high walls around the past. Six months is our current negative limit. Okay, then we go back and stop the destruction of Stark Tower. That's within our range. We failed to stop it then. How do you expect to stop it now? Well... I have a few ideas. Of course, I'd be thinking about how to change the world since my 15th birthday. Ultimate 1.0 
It will be a kind of superhero resistance network, created from the post-human catalysts and files we stole from the Maker. Connected by Stark, Tech and Common Cause. Small at first, but growing exponentially as we add new nodes. Here's my problem with the book. So far, Ultimates 1.0, which is a nod to the original, is the only thing we're ever going to see to, to the original Ultimate Universe. They show a picture of the main Marvel Universe Fantastic Four instead of the Ultimate Fantastic Four. It would have made more sense to show off the Ultimate Universe versions and could basically show Doctor Doom like, yo, this was supposed to be you in this universe, but no, they deliberately avoid any connection or any mention of Earth 1610 when this book is literally named after a team from Earth 1610. But you show off the main Marvel Universe Fantastic Four and Avengers. Do you see my problem here? It's you, you are literally just taking the name to nostalgia bait people. You propose we recreate this other world here? This Earth 616? Dennis Camp, I, I just want you to know, this is very disrespectful. Like, you damn well know it's supposed to be Earth 1610, but you show Earth 616. Like, why? This is supposed to be about the Ultimate Universe, and you can't even pay respect or homage to it in the first issue. This isn't good, man. I propose we put right what the Maker did wrong. To help this world become the world it was supposed to be. A world of heroes. This world isn't that one. Realities diverge. The Maker has purged himself of mercy. The people in these files are likely dead. Then we'll find replacements. With the population data and computing power at our disposal, we can find near-perfect substitutes. Where history fails, we'll let science choose. Doom has his own ideas. Origin. Machines. It could work with a few modifications. As we see an image of main Marvel Universe Hawkeye and not Ultimate Universe Hawkeye. Why? Such as... He is unsettling and brilliant. Intense. Trapped inside his city... The Maker has thousands of years to prepare for our next meeting. We only have two. If we're to have any hope, we'll have to make most of them. The Immortus Engine. Yeah, I thought about it, but I'm not sure. There are already so many moving parts to this. Time travel only adds further complications and calculations. The monologue continues. Not quite the maker, but there is a resemblance. Leave the calculations to me. We'll have your ultimate network six months in the past, and our army would have grown overnight. I tried to call him Reed, but he insists I call him Doom. Four dimensions, Iron Lad, at least. As we see an image of the main Marvel Universe Avengers, and not the Ultimates, you know, the team that the book is named after. Like, the disrespect to just the source material, but you want to capitalize off the name, it's just, wow. Like, the hubris here, and like, people wonder why the MCU has gotten so bad. It's because you've got people who just think because they, they know the name, and they could just do whatever the fuck they want to the name, and it will just sell. And now look where Marvel is today. Just, wow. While Doom did the math, I designed the super identities and calculated the possibility of heroism 
as a function of location, age, psychological, history, past, trauma, and 244 other unique variables. 75 years had passed, but for him, it was instant time travel. 2024? Who's president? I told Captain America the United States broke up in 1969. I'm sorry. With all things considered, he took it pretty well. As we see a homage to the original Ultimates when Captain America woke up from the ice, finding out what year it was. But still, that's not good enough. You won't even mention the name of the Earth hit that scene comes from. The world. Even this one. Even ours. It has such wonders I never knew. There are gods, Dad. Did you know there are gods? How is he, Sif? In the room next door, a god bled out all over the floor. As we see Sif looking over Thor. Sith? It should be nothing for him but magic blade. The wound won't close. I'm sorry. If you need anything, it is gods who grant this gift to mortals, not the other way round. Leave us. Who do you think gods pray to? When they pray? For six days, I didn't sleep, I didn't eat, while I worked, my armor fed concentrated nutrients and proprietary stark stimulants directly into my bloodstream, as we see him working on that pictotech suit for Spider-Man. Six days, preparing catalysts and calculating trajectories through the fourth dimension. Six days, checking and rechecking our math. On the seventh day, there were gods, Dad. We were ready. We are ready, says fake Doctor Doom. It won't work. Though, not everyone was so confident. What? You can't start a revolution from your living room. Revolutions start on the ground, and heroes don't come out of boxes. It won't work. This is not a revolution. More like a machine. An experiment. One to shake the world. This is science. No. It's a revolution. And I know one when I see one. As we see fake Doctor Doom and Captain America clash quite often it seems. There is some very high level math and engineering at work here, Steve, even for us to understand sometimes, but it should work. I'll admit it, the moment was a little anticlimactic, but time travel is instantaneous. One second after, we sent out our origin boxes into the past, and they would always have been there. Is that it? I thought it'd be a little bit more dramatic, as they've just used to time travel again, and they've gone into the future. 1,200 miles above the Earth's atmosphere, I opened a window ready to look upon a world overflowing with heroes. It looks... the same. Yeah, pretty much the same. Shoot. Worse, in fact. Measurably worse. That Steve Rogers, he really is a perfect human. He didn't even say I told you so. It only looks like one or two. The rest all rejected, intercepted, or deceased. A lot of accidental suicide by some superpower. Okay, I'll admit it. I have not conquered time yet. Until you've got a better handle on it, maybe we should stick to time travel into the old-fashioned way. 
one second at a time. I... You overreact. One does not abandon an experiment after a single failure. Experiment? These are people's lives. We must troubleshoot and try again. Enough! Steve's right. We killed people, Doom. Ruined lives. I don't care if it puts us at a disadvantage. The immortal engine is off limits. We'll save the world some other way. Ultimate V.20 Somebody call about a bug problem? As we see, Hank Pym squish a bug outside of some restaurant in Hoboken, New Jersey. Whoa, keep your voices down. I'm running a restaurant here. You'll scare off my customers. Sorry. Uh, what are we dealing with here, Mr. Flannel? What variety of vermin exactly? What am I? A taxidermist? Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Food's going missing, and I got mouths to feed. Whatever they are, I want them dead. Don't worry, we'll take care of it. Like the van says, no job too big or small. Hank and Janet both gear up and descend into the basement. Everything okay, Hank? Hmm? You've been kind of distant lately. For months, actually. Is it... Are you having the dreams again? Janet, I told you that in confidence. It's just us down here, Hank. I'm your wife. No one's making fun of you. Recurring nightmares about ants begging for their lives is nothing to laugh at. It's the little personal details about themselves that slip in. That's the most horrible part. And, God, I'm such a mess, Jan. Sometimes I think you'd be better off without me. We've talked about this, Hank. I love you. I love our life together. Everyone's a mess. The world's a mess. Come on. I think I've heard something coming over there. But... Do you... Do you ever wish things were different? I think... There's more to life than squashing bugs. If that's what you mean. I'd like to try bringing life into the world one day. Uh, kids? Sure. What could be better than that? Imagine. Our own little family. And then we see both Hank and Janet Pym come across a family of moloids and they basically get scared and leg it out of the basement. Well, did you take care of it? No way, Flannel. You've got moloids living down there. From what I can see, an, an extended family. Okay, I'll pay double, but you do disposal. Sir, they tell stories. They bury their dead. I can recommend a humane relocation service. Those cost an arm and a leg and take weeks. Fine. Triple. And I'll handle the disposal. Final offer. Hank and Janet decide to say no deal and walk off. No deal, Flannel. We don't kill anything with a culture. You have to draw the line somewhere. Oh, that's rich. You're exterminators for Christ's sake. If killing bothers you so much, find a new line of work. That guy was an asshole. I know. But his moloid position is pretty mainstream. Killing them isn't even a crime. And you want to bring kids into this screwed up world? The world's always been screwed up. And we'd be great parents. You'd be great. Me? I don't know. <laughs> you should trust yourself more, Hank. You've overcome a lot. And you're a good man. 
I don't know where all this doubt is coming from lately. It's... It's just the dreams, like you said before. I'll be... I'll be better after I get a good night's sleep. And while this happens, Ultimate Iron Lad shows up in the middle of their speech. You know... You know... I've had a weird dream the other night myself. I was in our apartment, but everything was the wrong size. Our drawers were as big as the Grand Canyon, and our bed in the palm of my hand. What, what do you think that's about? And then we see Henry Pym and Janet Van Dyne. We need to talk, as we see Iron Lad flying in front of their van. Both Hank and Janet seem shocked, and Hank just decides to drive out the way and get away from this guy. Was that Howard Stark? I thought he was dead. Wait, did he know our names, Hank? And Hank just looks scared and, like, don't know what to do. You know I'd never hurt you, no matter what. Don't you, Jan? They're going southbound Broad Street. I will stop them. Gently. Where's this coming from? You're Hank Pym. You wouldn't hurt a fly. Oh. Y you know what, I... And before she could even finish her sentence, Thor's generic Mjolnir hits the van, stopping it entirely. But then we see this orb that looks very similar to the orb that Spider-Man got, but is more blue than silver. And then we see a hologram of Iron Lad or Tony Stark pop up and say, Hello, talking to Henry Pym and Janet Van Dyne. What? What is that? Oh God, please listen carefully. I'm sorry, Janet. I was... I love you. I love you so much and I'm sorry, says Hank. But the hologram says, It's us who should apologize. There was a miscommunication. This is for you, says the hologram of Iron Lad. But Iron Lad and the rest of the Ultimates are outside and says, I'm sorry about the van. We're still figuring everything out. They yet live. How much more gentle do you want, says Thor. But the hologram in the van continues and says, Stealth suits to hide and mask your identities and the sample of pin particles necessary for you to undergo post-human transformation. And Iron Lad outside hears himself as the hologram and he's like, ugh. I hate my voice on the, some of these recordings. I sound so cold. No wonder why these things didn't work. Should have been superheroes, but a great evil robbed you of both your destinies and left Henry with a irreversible brain damage. Your accident. I... I don't remember. Forget that. We don't have much time. They're coming for us now. Janet comes out the van and pulls up on Tony Stark. Hey, you're Tony Stark. You killed thousands of people. No, it was actually Hulk who did that. I hope you're not one of those people who believes everything you're told, Mrs. Van Dyne. Exercise is creating a society that could be perfectly directed and controlled says the hologram inside. Look, I don't have to tell you the world's broken. I can see it in your faces, the sad slump of your shoulders. And then we hear the hologram still talking in the van saying, you were supposed to have a different life. Well, we're here, we'll fix it. And we need your help. And then Captain America continues into the conversation and says, it's been six months, and you haven't accepted our offer. I don't blame you. You must have a thought you'd be alone. 
which is why we've come to you in person. We wanted to tell you. To protect the innocent and save lives and inspire. Six months? What's he talking about, Hank? You won't be alone. We're here. We're here to help you. You'd be a part of something. I, I don't understand. A part of what? Become a superhero. The solution we're calling it. But before he could finish his sentence, Captain Britain turns up with a bunch of monsters. Captain Britain, one of the Maker's inner circle, and he's brought his personal guard, the Black Crusade. Captain Britain? The one screaming in French? Aye, the one with the preying Frank with the magic blade is mine, says Lady Sif. No, stay close to Thor. He's our way out of here. Besides, it's me that Captain Britain wants. I'm the reason he doesn't have preheerable vision. As we see, Iron Lad flying into battle. Ultimate attack! As we see the heroes go up against Captain Britain's horde. Fake Doctor Doom with his guns, Iron Lad with his repulsors, Thor with his hammer, and Lady Sif with her sword. And then we see that Janet and Hank are just having this really emotional talk. Janet, I'm sorry. I didn't want to lose. You don't have to explain anything, Hank. I understand. I know you're scared. I'm scared too, but they stole your future, says the Tony Stark hologram. You saw what we did to your papa's tower, Petit Stark. Grand improvement, no? How many nights did we stay up terrified watching the news feeling helpless? How many mornings did we drag ourselves out of bed? As we see the Ultimates fighting the heroes, Iron Lad fighting Captain Britain, and then we see... Hank and Janet have this emotional moment while the battle's going down. I'm tired of being afraid. Aren't you? There's more to life than squashing bugs, Hank. There has to be. I love you no matter what, you, what choice you make. But this is mine. As we see her crack open that orb that Tony Stark built for her. The question is... Do you want it back? And then we see Janet gets her new uniform, which I must say is still, hands down, my favourite wasp design that I've ever seen. I know it's with me when it comes down to this design. Okay, let's see how this... Whoa! The suit could fly? And yeah, she ain't used to, be able to being able to fly and shrink down in size just yet. And she's like, that was amazing, as we see her fly past Captain America fighting some dude. And then we see Hank say, I don't deserve her. She doesn't seem to agree, says Captain America. She doesn't know. She hasn't read them. As we continue with the battle between Iron Lad and Captain Britain, it's quite brutal, I must say. Ah... There is your face, Petit Stark. I remember the whole world remembers it. <laughs> She's supposed to be a superhero. She's supposed to make the world a better place. As we see, he um, Wasp is actually fighting alongside fake Doctor Doom. Hey, how do I know you're not the bad guys? I suppose you don't. But we're not the ones trying to kill you, says fake Doctor Doom. Me? Even in that reality, I'm a mess. A failure. Hero, villain, good, bad, or mad. I can't seem to make up my mind. I'm a loser at best, a menace at worst. I'm dangerous. 
as we see, Hank is still contemplating on if he wants this life or not, while everybody is having this giant battle go down. As we return to the battle between Iron Lad and Captain Britain, Tony gets in some words. So, you went with the milky white for the eye, huh? You know they make life like prosthetics now? Irises and everything. I could probably get you a deal. The things it said I did. It says I hurt people. It says I hurt her. My Janet. I'd never hurt her, but I do. It already happened. As we see, just Henry or Hank even having this like mental breakdown on what to do when there is literally hell breaking loose right around him. Sure. I'm afraid of dying or getting hurt, but I'm most afraid of that I will become what you want me to be, what I'm supposed to be, and I'll hurt the people I love most. I don't have the answer for you, Henry. Certainly no guarantees. I can only say that man is not you. His failures are not your failures. His sins are not yours. So I'm guessing they're referring to Ultimate Giant Man here. Because he's the only one that I know who's genuinely done bad things. And I know there's Yellow Jacket. But then again, Yellow Jacket wasn't really all that bad other than slapping his wife. But uh, it's like, I know you're referring to Ultimate's Giant Man. But you don't actually show him in any way, shape or form. In my existence, Henry, there are many times that call us to be bigger than ourselves, for the greater good. As we see Thor and Sith fighting these giant monsters. Thor, don't. Let me. You're wounded. I am no invalid. I am the god of Thor. And I have been killing giants since the sky was young as we see him bring down a strike of lightning, frying all of the giants, but at a cost to his strength. You stubborn fool. The world needs giants right now, son. No one can make this choice for you, Henry. But if I can make an observation, you could have gotten rid of that thing any time, buried it, thrown it into the river, given it away, smashed it to pieces. But you've been driving around with it, in arm's reach for six months. I'm no genius, but it seems to me, that means something. Yeah, gotta love Captain America's inspirational speeches. Stupid peasant, as Captain Britain knocks Iron Lad to the ground. Who are you to oppose us? I trace my lineage to Louis the Fourteenth, the Sun King himself. I was born to rule this world. My empire? Even Uncle Louis could not have dreamed. All of Europe is my playground. Your East Coast? My new toy. Avalon is also mine. Of her most holy symbols, I make mockeries. Arthur's round table. I broke into the firewood to burn descendants. The lady of the lake. I took as a concubine. The holy grail I made my chamber pot. I have crushed the soul from people beneath my boot. What are you next to that? As we see, iron lad on the ground. With Captain Britain's boot on his neck. We're the Ultimates, and something Louis learned that you should know. As we see Iron Lad fire up his blasters from his boots and fly away, 
there are more than us than there are of you. And then, all of the villains noticed, we have boots too. A giant shadow casts over them, and I think we all know what's about to happen. And our boots are bigger. As we see, Giant Man's boot basically comes from the sky and stomps on all of the bad guys in the area. And this guy seems to grow at a pretty high size. I would say here Giant Man's over like 200 feet tall or even 300 feet tall here. And he says, and you said there's more to life than squashing bugs as he looks at his wife. As we continue to the aftermath of the battle, we see a giant footprint with a U engraved into the ground. It was a good first step, even if Britain survived. It's a statement that they can't ignore. A statement that they can see from space. It's an announcement. But what is it announcing? As we see on the breaking news, super terrorists put their foot down. Online conspiracy group claim footprint of a god. And then we find out. The ultimates are here, and we are going to leave a mark. As we see, all of the ultimates fully assembled, with 17 months remaining. And that is where ultimates issue number one ends. So that was Ultimates issue number one, and so far, I am just so conflicted right now, because I really wanted a book that was really made for the Ultimate Universe fans of Earth 1610, you know, because with Ultimate Spider-Man, which people regarded as the best run from the original, has no intention of being respectful to the original Ultimate Spider-Man. Same with Ultimate X-Men. And clearly shows in this. Where it's called the Ultimate. But they were so adamant in showing main Marvel Universe Avengers and Fantastic Four. But you want to call the name Ultimate. It's, it's just really, really conflicting for me as a fan. To the point where I just feel like this is just a big cash grab. But, the story as a whole, it's fine. Like, I don't think it was a bad one. Um, there was lots of action in here. Um, we got to see the debut of Giant Man and Wasp, which is cool. But, you, I just can't get that nasty taste out of my mouth. It's basically, we know they don't like the original universe... But they want to capitalize off the name, which just, I, I, it really just puts me off the entire universe, man. Because it just makes me feel, you know there was popularity with the original one, but you have no intention of honoring the original creator's work or the fans of it. But when it comes down to the action, I think, yeah, that was a definitely a redeeming quality for me. But it... For me, it's just, this just doesn't feel like Ultimate. This feels like an off, a different world about the Avengers, and it doesn't really honor the Ultimate's name. It's Ultimate's in name only. Yeah, we saw the one scene where Captain America gets pissed off about the revelation of when, what time in the future he's in. Yeah, but it's like, Everything else was just a derivative of 616. And if you was going to do that, if that was the plan, you didn't need to use the name Ultimate. You could have just had your own name. But, I don't know. As a Ultimate Universe fan, like, I've grown up with the original. It's what got me into Marvel in the first place. For me, it's just rather disappointing. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Did you enjoy this issue? How do you guys feel about this? Are you 1610 fans of the original Ultimate Universe or not? You know what to do in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Drop a like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.
Take care.